Let's just pray. Almighty God, who led your apostles to ordain ministers to serve in all the churches, pour out your Holy Spirit on Graham and those who are to be set apart at this time for the ministry of word and sacrament, that they may be strengthened for the work to which you have called them and be faithful shepherds of your flock to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, Graham will lead us in the first part of our work. Morning, everyone. I just want to say that uh, the ordination service next Sunday, uh, they said that they're going to stream it online. Uh, it's at 4 pm. I don't have any details yet of how we can access it. But if I get them, I'll uh, give them to Father David and he can announce it next Sunday morning in case anyone wants to watch the service. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts know, all desires know, and from whom no secret side cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. Before the absolution on the screen, there will be one of the doxicology songs, uh, which is a lament and has the uh, Lord have mercy. by our hand Oceans weep for beauty lost and forests plead for your return Fields are drenched in tears and blood All nature groans beneath sin's curse Have mercy Oh, mm -hmm. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you, Lord God. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of our Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for today. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from Jonah, chapter 3. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat, in, he sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush, so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint, and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labour, and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left hand, and also many animals. This is the word of the Lord. I now read a psalm, and after each verse, the response is, The Lord is near to those who call upon him. I will exalt you, O God my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and praise your name for ever and ever. The Lord, the Lord is the name of those who call upon him. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, 
there is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty, and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. They shall publish the remembrance of all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 1. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with, with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side, with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. We're now going to watch another song video, Canticle of the Song.
waters our fields and blesses our crops so all the earth yields from death unto life her mystery revealed springs forth in joy the heavens are telling the glory of God and all creation is shouting for joy come dancing the forest complain of fear and sing sing to the glory of the Lord praise for the earth makes life to grow the creatures you made to let your life show the flowers and trees that help us to know the heart of Please stand. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. At about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you sitting here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when they first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we are in creation tide. It's only in recent years that the National Church has encouraged us to observe creation tide, or the season of creation, 
from the 1st of September to the 4th of October. It is not actually mentioned in our church calendar, nor are the lectionary readings particularly geared to this. However, back in 1989, the late ecumenical patriarch Dimitrios I proclaimed the 1st of September as a day of prayer for the environment. Indeed, the Orthodox Church year starts on that day anyway and is a commemoration of how God created the world. Also, it is this weekend that the Jewish faith celebrate their New Year with the feast of Rosh Hashanah, while Muslims celebrated New Year about a month ago. On the 4th of October, many churches from Western traditions commemorate St. Francis of Assisi, known to many as the author of that canticle we just heard, the Canticle of the Sun. For us, all, in various denominations and indeed across various religions, this really is creation tide. Given the concern that so many people now have over the state of God's world, about the state of the environment, it's no wonder that over the last 30 years the Christian churches have encouraged the observation of creation tide. Much liturgy relating to God's creation has developed, and indeed we are using some of it in this service today, as indeed we have for the last couple of weeks. And the words that we've been using are from a standard liturgy that is used by people of all Christian denominations all over the world. And with them, we are acknowledging that we are pushing the planet to its limits. It's important that we acknowledge the deteriorating state of the planet. We expect to have more and more things, more and more quickly than our ancestors. My grandmother, having lived through two world wars, literally threw nothing away. Every paper bag was carefully folded and put in another bag ready to be reused. She and her brother were avid whist players and I was given the task of cutting their whist cards into strips to light the candles in their electricless house. Broken pottery was used at the bottom of plant pots, newspapers were used to light the fire, and even old saucepans were used to feed the cats, dogs, chicken and turkeys. These days, we reuse very little. And we fill our black bins with things that can only go to landfill. Fortunately, recycling is becoming practiced more and more. And we now have our blue bins. We have our recycling centers. And we have a number of outlets for things we no longer want or need. This concept of recycling is one of the main reasons I am involved with the charity shop here in Willington. The shop not only raises money for children and young people of the area, but it also enables thousands and thousands of items to be recycled and given new life. In this country, I believe the tide is turning, but we all need to do our bit. Whether it's picking up that crisp packet that just happened to be on the path of the church as we came here, or giving things we no longer need to another charity that can sell them on or reuse them and thus give them new life. We can all do something. But why has our planet deteriorated so much over the years? When we read Genesis, the very beginning of the Bible, we hear... Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air 
and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And then, again, in Psalm 8, we read that God has given us responsibility for the earth he created. And we read there, you have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. God has given us dominion. He has given us power. He has given us control over our creation. So just where have we gone wrong? Why is the earth at risk? Why have we let it happen? I think it could be because over the centuries we have become more and more industrialised, more and more technologicalized, and people have become more and more detached from the land. When you live on the land and your very living and income depend on that land, you become so much aware of its needs and the necessity of nurturing it that you really do care for it carefully. Because if you don't, your crops, be they animals or vegetables, fail and you lose your income. The background to the Bible is very rural. We heard an incident of it in the story of the vineyard and workers this morning. And indeed, the population of the Bible lands back in the time of Jesus was probably no more than about a million. There were no vast cities, no vast urban conurbations as we have today. Even Jerusalem, the capital city, was barely larger than here in Willington. Bethlehem, at the time Jesus was born, was barely a thousand people. And other biblical places we read of, such as Bethany and Jericho, were merely a few hundred in population. People, if they didn't have their own livestock grazing close to them, were close to where their food was actually produced. With greater urbanization over the years, fewer and fewer people see food production at first hand. They don't realize the importance of caring for God's creation. But, as I mentioned early, earlier, I feel that here in our country, the tide is turning. People are becoming aware of food miles. People are once more looking at buying locally produced food. People are becoming more and more aware of the importance of buying things made from sustainable sources. And let's hope that this pattern develops not only in this country and other countries already practicing sustainability, but in all the countries of the world. We lamented for creation in the canticle earlier on. But as well as that, we need to celebrate creation. It's wonderful. Just look at it when you're outside, whether it's in the mists of the mellow, uh, mellow fruitfulness of autumn, or whether it's a sunny day or the snow in winter. We live in a wonderful world, a beautiful world. And so we must celebrate it in word and in deed. And we can celebrate it in the words of Francis of Assisi's Canticle of the Sun, which we listened to earlier. Let me remind you of part of it. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord.
in sound as we profess our faith in this special way. We belong to the Creator in whose image we are all made. In God we are breathing. In God we are living. In God we share the life of all creation. We belong to Jesus Christ, the true icon of God and of humanity. In Him God is living. In Him God is living. Through Him we are of the reconciled. We belong to the Holy Spirit, who gives us new life and strengthens our faith. In the Spirit, love is breathing. In the Spirit, truth is living. The breath of God always moves us. We belong to the Holy Trinity, who is one in all and three in one. In God, we are all made. In Christ, we are all saved. In the Spirit, we are all united. Please be seated for our prayers. As we come before God our Creator, let's bring our prayers for our church, for our community, and Eternal God, thank you for the place you have given humankind in creation, fashioning us in your image, and giving us the ability to shape and control our environment. Save us, though, from valuing ourselves too much and the rest of creation too little, from failing to treat our environment with the care and respect you expect. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive the wanton destruction of habitats, and bind the slaughter of endangered species from commercial gain, the putting of human interests before all others. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive the way humankind has impoverished our countryside, our world, and our lives through our failure to steward this planet's resources as wisely as we should. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Teach us to recognize the beauty, wonder, and diversity of the natural world and to fulfill our responsibilities towards it, understanding that it is not ours to use and abuse at will but is held in trust for future generations to enjoy in turn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for governments of the world that they will use their experience of those around them and their influence to create, to heal and to benefit the planet and all humankind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And especially we remember Carrie Roberts, Vera Greenwell, Sammy Bainbridge, Eileen Gardner, Maya Hill, Don White, John Hawes, Doreen Johnson, Anna Hardy, Brenda Barris, Buffy Ord, Joyce, Bill Sawyer, Lynn Kendall, Ruth Broadbent, Jane Gilmore, Hazel Featherston, Ken Wilson, and Colin Devonport. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who departed this life. We think of the families who have lost loved ones. All of those who have died during this pandemic. We pray for them, Lord, and for their families, and that you will be with them to hold them and revive them and take them forward. We pray especially for Arthur Turner, Shirley Blair, and Ronald Davies. We call to mind those whose memorial falls at this time for Nigel Cottle, Margaret Cottle, Doreen Tulip, Morris Taylorson, Ellis Rosethorne, George Morgan, Ian Mounter, Lily Glasper, Joe Frey, and Sidney Thompson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have called each and every one of us to follow your Son, Jesus Christ, and to work in your mission. And so we pray together our mission prayer. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for your great love shown to us in Jesus, and that you have called us into the fellowship of your church. As we continue your work in mission, open our eyes to your wonderful possibilities. Lead us to those whose hearts you are touching, that we may bring them to Jesus and learn together to follow him. For you are our hope and our eternal salvation. And in his name we pray. Amen. Lord, in these unprecedented times, we look for new ways for your church to grow and continually pray for your mission and the growth of your church. And we say together, God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help your church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, as we seek your word and your advice, guide us this coming week with your Holy Spirit. Merciful Lord, accept Jesus Christ for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. We are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Bless thou you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have our wealth to set before you, fruit of our labour and work of human hands. May it be used to glorify your name. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is Lift up your hearts. We lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, 
are your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So now let us pray to the Father as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one breath. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be here.
Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. And because you, without you our human frailty cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May God, who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, leads us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'll say a big thank you uh, this morning to uh, all those who have contributed to our worship today, uh, especially to Denise for that very long uh, piece I gave her to do. So thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, for our sermon, thank you, Shirley, for some wise and, and helpful words. And for the prayers from Stephen, uh, as ever. And, of course, uh, uh, Sue, who looks after us and makes sure that I have the right words to say. Now, next time we see Graham... Uh, he will not only be wearing a dog collar, but of course he'll be wearing a stole uh, as a deacon. And this is all very odd, because normally uh, a deacon would be received on their first Sunday uh, and will be wearing their so stole. Um, but we have Graham, and we've had him here for a while now, and we're sort of sending him away to be done. And he will come back to us well and truly done. In fact, well done, I hope. For those of you who have not experienced uh, a deacon before, uh, Graham will be wearing his stole in a slightly different way to the way in which Shirley and I wear them as priests. A deacon will wear uh, the stole across one shoulder only, and tied on the opposite uh, hip. So if you're wondering why uh, um, Graham is wearing his stole that way, it's not because he won first prize in the deacon competition at the cathedral, but because that's how deacons wear them. And in a year's time, when he's ordained as a priest, then the stole again is moved to be worn over both shoulders. So please continue to pray for Graham this week and for Mel, Eleanor and Sam as they come to this momentous point in Graham's life and ministry. And Graham, we send you to the cathedral, to our bishop, with blessings and with our prayers. And know that you are prayed for, that you are loved and cared for by this community for which you have been called to love and care for too. Thank you. Thanks to all of them. Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, Christ. of Christ. Amen.